Greetings, friends, and welcome back to 5 Minutes of Revelation. We're still in Revelation chapter 1. We're in verse 4, and we're going to be in verse 4 and 5 here for a while because it's a lot to unpack. Last time we talked about grace and peace. But who's that grace and peace from? Well, John says this. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. Who is the grace and peace emanating from? Well, it's emanating from God. And it's very interesting that, that John breaks God down into Father, Son, and Spirit, just as he is. This triune, triune God, the idea of, of Trinity, is evident right here in Revelation chapter 1. People don't, uh, some people think, you know, well, it's, it's, it's three gods. In fact, that's one of the uh, complaints that the, the Muslim world has with Christianity. They say we worship three gods. We don't. We worship one God who has three distinct persons, or three distinct essences. We have God the Father, who is and was and who is to come. John makes it very clear that this is the I Am. This takes us all the way back to Genesis. Who was the one who spoke existence into being? It was God who was here before the world was formed. He says to Moses, you know, when Moses says, what do I say your name is? My name is I Am. I am, I have always been, I am now, I was, and I will be forever. I am the I am, God said. And this is where grace and peace comes from. It comes from not the, the um, gods of Rome who uh, have temples today, but that temple can rot and fall down, or they can fall out of favor, or another god can come along and surpass them, or they can be at war with another gods, and you know, and they have all of this stuff going on, and they're very odd religion, really, very polytheistic religion, uh, and Christianity says no, there, there's one distinct God. There is only one God. We, He's revealed to us. In, in three distinct ways, as Father, as Eternal One, the God who always is, as God the Spirit. Uh, John puts it to, uh, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, that is, the sevenfold spirit of perfection that exists constantly before the throne of God, available to do whatever God bids, whatever the eternal one wants to happen will happen because his perfect spirit is always present and emanates from him outward into all of creation, not just the world, all of creation. It's a really fascinating idea when you stop and think about it. I think one of the things that I think I, I've thought about a lot lately is that you know, Christianity for many, many years has been considered very Western-centric, very Eurocentric. This is, you know, it's a Western religion. Uh, Buddhism and Hinduism are more Eastern religions, and uh, Judaism and, and Islam are kind of Middle Eastern religions, but Christianity is the religion of the West. And that's kind of how things were, were put together. But God says, no, I'm, I'm the God of everything. The eternal God who was before all things, who is now, will be after all things. All things are in submission to God. It's not a Western religion. It's not even a, a planet Earth religion. This is a cosmological reality. God is the God of all creation. Not just our little blue marble floating out here in the Milky Way. Think about that. Grace to you and peace from the eternal God. Peace from the, the spirit of perfection, the Holy Spirit who is before his throne all, day, all the time, never not in his presence, 
never not doing his bidding, never not actively working in his creation, holding creation together and accomplishing the divine purposes of God. Grace to you, peace from him and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. Who is this Jesus? And this is the Jesus who is speaking to us. Remember, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. The opening statement. Who is this Jesus? Well, he is the faithful witness. He's the one who spoke only those things which God gave him to spoke. Whatever the Father tells me to say, I will say it, even though it cost him his life and it cost him a pretty pretty desperate death. But because of his faithfulness, he was the firstborn from the dead. For Jesus rose again the third day. This is a historical fact. This is not just belief. This is not just something that we adhere to. This is truth. He rose from the dead. And because he was a faithful witness, and because he has risen from the dead, he is the ruler over the kings of the earth. And this would have been particularly satisfying to these people who are living under Roman authority. Because the challenge that they're going to face is how do we live out this new transformed life in light of the Roman authority that dictates not only our religious customs, but, but all of our social customs, even down to the, the social sphere that I'm allowed to live in. How, how do we navigate all of this? Well, you have grace and peace from the one who is greater than Caesar. Caesar is not Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Caesar will die and they'll elect a new Caesar. Jesus of Nazareth died and he rose again. And he sits at the right hand of the Father who is and was and always will be. And by the power of that Holy Spirit, which is forever in the presence of God, he is now reaching out and taking even the lowliest, the most broken, and the most desperate human being and giving them new life, new purpose, and an eternal hope that goes beyond the brokenness of this world. We can live lives of grace and peace because Christ has given it to us. Even when things are hard, we have it. That is really good news. And that, again, is the opening statement. John's writing to these churches and he's going to tell us a whole lot of difficult things. But it all is underpinned by this truth. That there is grace and peace between God and man. Because Jesus Christ was faithful. Has risen from the dead. And has all authority in heaven and earth. Even over Caesar. Hallelujah. See you next time.